first, let's go ahead and check in with Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich with the very latest on the storm's track. Brad? Yeah, and a big update tonight. We kind of saw this coming earlier. If you were following online, it's now a Category 3 storm. The winds have increased to 115 miles an hour. The other big story here, it's moving technically north here at 7, but if you look at the actual compass heading, it's 10 degrees. If you know anything about uh, compasses, due north is 0, 10 degrees is a little bit right of there. So it's technically starting that northeast turn that we've been waiting for. And we can see that on the radar imagery starting to slowly budge to the northeast, which is good news for Charleston. They're still going to get storm surge and clobbered, but if it kept moving north, that would have brought the strongest winds directly into Charleston. Right now, it looks like they're still going to see strong winds, but the strongest should stay just offshore. This is the latest forecast track. Notice the three there, meaning it's a category three. Remember, the difference between a high end cat two and three is literally one mile per hour, so we can't get too caught up in that. It's just a sign that it is getting stronger. Could be a three tomorrow before it begins to weaken slightly because as it gets closer to the coast, wind shear is going to start weakening it, but it's not going to happen quick enough. It's only maybe going to weaken to a high end cat two, so that the overall impacts don't change. And notice how close it is. It actually scrapes the entire coast from about Myrtle Beach to Wilmington up towards Harker's Island, Moorhead City, then the Outer Banks between tomorrow morning and Friday morning. So pretty devastating impact likely somewhere along the North Carolina coast because of storm surge and strong wind. Coming up, Aisha Scott and I will break down some of the impacts we could see and on the coast they could be pretty high guys. Mm. All right. Thank you, Brad.